Are you thinking of studying mechanical engineering or maybe you're already studying it and you're wondering if you need to be good at math to become a mechanical engineer? Then this video is for you. <laughs> so do you need to be good at math to become a mechanical engineer? The short answer is yes. No. Well, kind of. Let me explain. <laughs> Hey and welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and I'm a German mechanical engineer based in Sweden. So if you clicked on this video, I'm gonna guess that you fall into one of three categories that I just made up. Category number one, you have always sucked at math, you hate it, you don't understand it, or you are at least never really good at it, but you would love to be a mechanical engineer and you wanna know if you even stand a chance to become one. Category number two, you always used to be kind of good at math, you really enjoyed it, maybe you were even the best in your class, but maybe you took some advice math classes in high school or you're already studying at university and suddenly everyone is super smart and great at math or so it seems and you think this is not the kind of math I know everyone seems to get it I don't get it I don't like it and you're wondering if it even makes sense to become a mechanic engineer at this point or if you should just give up by the way I was in that second category and then category number three you've always been fantastic at math you're still killing it you love math and you don't really need this video <laughs> you just want to make sure that engineering is math intensive enough for you. Okay, let's be real. No one's gonna be in that last category, but the list would have just felt incomplete without this one. I'm sure you understand. So I'm gonna try my best to give you the best advice I can for each of these situations that you might be in. I'm gonna split this video into two parts. First, I'm gonna look at the kind of math that you have to get through in university and which courses are the most math intensive. And second, I'm gonna look at the kinds of jobs mechanic engineers typically have and rank them by how much math I think you need in each of them. And with that, attract the hate of the internet upon me because people are gonna disagree with me. <laughs> but it's fine. Everything is fine. Totally fine. <laughs> So let's look at university, AKA engineering school. When you study mechanic engineering, you're gonna have dedicated math courses, especially in the beginning of your studies. These courses are like the foundation of your engineering skills. And then you'll also have all kinds of different engineering courses. Some of them will be heavily based on the foundation of math and then others will not use any math at all and then the rest will be somewhere in the middle. The main math courses you're going to have are calculus, linear algebra, and differential equations. And maybe there's gonna be a calculus two class as well. And you pretty much just have to get through these. There's no way around this. Personally, I kind of liked calculus and differential equations, but I did not like linear algebra because I could not visualize in my head what I was calculating. By the way, let me know if you want me to make a more in-depth video explaining these different kinds of math. I really don't want to make this, but if enough people are interested and you think it'll help you out, then I'm gonna make it. Now, the good news in all of this is that in the math courses for engineers, you don't really have to understand the mathematical derivations behind the math. Like you don't have to understand how to derive each of the formulas that you use. If you were studying pure math, then you would have to do that. But as engineers, we're only really interested in what is the right formula to use and how to use it to get the answers we need. Now, a word of warning, your math professors are not gonna agree with me on this because your math professors are not engineers their mathematicians. So they're going to show you in detail how to derive every single formula. But during my math exams, I was never asked to do that. I had to show that I was able to select the right formula and apply it to get to the right answer. So to me, the lectures about derivations were a waste of time and I may or may not have skipped them. I'm not telling you to do or not do anything. I'm just saying you have to choose your battles. <laughs> Enough. Now let's take a look at the engineering courses and how much math you need there. Arguably one of the most important courses for mechanic engineering is mechanics. Duh. And you have different kinds of mechanics. It starts out with statics, which to me is the easiest. It's just about understanding the forces in a system that doesn't move, like a building shouldn't move anyway. And then you have dynamics, which is about systems that do move or should move like a spring mass system or a motor and a transmission. And then design theory is heavily based on mechanics, specifically dynamics, where you design things like a transmission. But all of this is not super math intensive. It's more like common sense. <laughs> so let's get to the more math intensive courses. <sighs> 
there's fluid mechanics, which is all about the behavior of fluids and is pretty math intensive. But now we're gonna get to the real <laughs> math intensive stuff. Now we're really getting up there in terms of math. We're talking thermodynamics, control theory, and electrical engineering. And to me, these were the toughest courses throughout the entire degree because they all rely on math that is nearly impossible to visualize in your mind. Or maybe that's just me. <laughs> But I just took them all once and said, okay, I'm not gonna specialize in those fields. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 And then I went on to specialize in production engineering where you need almost no math, just common sense, logic, and unicorns. Um, no, addition and subtraction for the most part anyway. So that was university. Now let's talk about what you ultimately want to do, work as an engineer. Obviously, all engineering jobs are a little bit different from each other. The most important skill in my mind is not math but logical thinking and common sense but it of course helps a lot <laughs> to have a strong foundation in math and really really depends on what kind of job you want to do so i looked up the most common job positions for mechanic engineers which i'm gonna put right here on the screen now this is a long list it's of course not complete and no two jobs are the same even if they have the same job title but i'm gonna do the best i can to give you a general impression of how much math you use in these different fields so i sorted these jobs into four different tiers let's look through them now i know people are gonna fight me on this <laughs> don't fight me on this i don't have all the answers okay but if you make the people mad they're gonna tell you what they think and then we hopefully get a great discussion in the comments on how much math everyone really uses and you'll get a much better perspective on this topic than you could have gotten from just me so let's make the masses mad the first category I'm gonna call 1 plus 1 equals 3 because why not so here are the jobs that I think you can get away with pretty little math are you mad yet so most of these are pretty much at the interface of business and engineering which is a really important position you need to have people who understand both the engineering side and the business side but this means that you need to understand less details about each of them you need to have more a good overall picture which is why the level of math required is generally not as high as if you were to do just engineering but there are then of course other things that you need to bring to the table like knowledge about sales or law management finance or whatever else now let's move on to the next tier which is going to be common sense and logic and excel for the win in this category i put product designers even though this really depends on what kind of products you design, you could also put them in the next higher tier. And then I have manufacturing engineers, production engineers, which is pretty much what I'm doing. So I work as an automation engineer for material flow and robotics for a battery production company. I basically help build factories. Essentially, I look at the different materials we want to move through the factory and how much and how to move these different materials. And then I select and design and purchase equipment to move that material. So this can be robots and conveyor belts, packaging machines, warehouses, AGVs, basically material handling equipment. And the kind of math you need for this is like addition and subtraction. Like I do have to build a lot of like Excel sheets to make sure that we're like setting up every single conveyor belt, every single robot, warehouse, whatever, for the right throughputs and with, you know, having enough buffer at certain points and stuff. But this is all things that, you know, I can visualize in my head, I can kind of draw on paper, I can build an Excel sheet easily. There's no complicated math in there. So that's why I put these into the second tier. Now let's move on to the third tier, which I call math is life. Yeah, these use quite a bit of math. I think, again, I'm not an expert on all kinds of engineering, just on my own job sort of. So most of these use a lot of mechanics and then quality engineers also need statistics which is not really something you learn very in depth in engineering but it's also not that complicated once you do learn it. Simulation engineers use all kinds of math to build their simulations of for example in a factory of simulation engineers who will simulate the material flow but then you also have simulation engineers who will look at how a certain component in let's say a car behaves over time how it changes due to maybe heat or friction or things like that so these are all things where you can build simulations and depending on what kind of thing you're doing you need different kinds of math but it's usually quite math intensive so that was the third tier and now let's go to the fourth and last tier which i'm just gonna call bra because don't do it this is uh, too much math for me so here i put things like process engineers aerospace engineers biomedical engineers thermal engineers 
petroleum engineers. So they all use different kinds, like obviously thermodynamics for thermal engineers, a lot of control theory for cross engineers, um, and then a whole lot of other. I don't really know what they do. I have a feeling I'm gonna make some automotive engineers mad that they put aerospace engineering in a high category, but I don't care. Please. Now, if after all of this you're still considering to become a mechanical engineer, you might want to check out my video on five things I wish I knew before becoming a mechanical engineer. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. This is uh, no.